something came in the mail. Sorry, Lori. Look at this. This is super exciting. So, you know how I got the LV-1901? Sony Trinitron, but it did not have the player with it. Well, that's about to change. Because inside this box is a Sony SL6200, which is the model that I need for that TV. So let me see if I can get this out without making a huge mess. Oh my gosh, there it is. Wow. Need some cleaning. It's going to need some repair work too. But that's it. All right. Let's get it all the way out. So we're going to clean it up. We're going to restore it a little bit. We're going to get it back in the working condition. And then we are going to have the most badass TV VCR combo in the history of physical media. So I've gotten this Sony SL6200 Betamax player out. And as you can see, it's pretty filthy. A lot of stuff going on here. Not just dust, a lot of grime and dirt. And like a sticker was on here and it looks pretty, pretty gross. The side here is all scratched up and even peeling a bit. So I'm going to start by giving this thing a good clean up. I'm going to show you how I do that. And so you can see the before and after what it looks like coming in and then how it looks on the way out. I've actually already have cleaned this uh, a little bit so you can see it looks much better than the other side. There's kind of a before and after there. So let's start cleaning. So the first thing we're going to start off by doing is seeing if we can clean this top black part, mostly where all this discoloration and stuff is. See if we can just kind of blend this in, make this look a little bit better. We're always going to have these scratches and it's not going to look perfect, but we're going to try to clean it off a little bit with some in dust wipes. Now this top part is already looking significantly better than it did before I started cleaning it. Got a lot of that sticker residue off that was over here. It looks much uh, blacker, doesn't look as faded and as discolored as it did before. Still got to get up here. I need something small. I'm going to use some tiny cotton swabs to, to clean in these uh, little spots around the screws. And these little uh, divots that go across the back down here, and all these and all these little crevices wherever there's dust and dirt and buildup, I'm gonna try to get in there and clean a little bit. Right now, I'm gonna try to clean this side over here, and so I'm gonna take some in dust and I'm gonna spray it on a rag, and then I'm gonna wipe that side off just to see if we can get that looking a little bit better too. So let me shake this up. Spray that down real good. Try 
try not to peel it up any more than it already is down on the corners. That stuff, once I get it put into the TV, you won't be able to see that. That's not going to be an issue. So that's not a big concern for me. But I don't want to make it worse, that's for sure. So just kind of wipe it down. And wow, that's already looking better. I'm going to go ahead and go across the top with this also as I'm going. This stuff works really good for cleaning. <clears throat> Most of the things I clean, uh, I use it for. You might want to spot test it somewhere hidden before you put it on there. If you do try to use some in dust, just to make sure it's not going to damage your finish at all. But it really does make a huge difference with how it looks. I mean, that looks incredible. It will dry some and it won't look quite, it won't have quite that sheen on it, but it won't lose it very much. You're gonna be surprised at how well that stuff works. So, got it looking much, much better. I'll wipe back over it, try to get any excess dust off of it. see that it's starting to look pretty good again like in these buttons here and any of these small areas I'm gonna need to use either q-tips or these really fine tip cotton swabs that I got from Amazon to get into those hard to reach places. So before I do that though, let me go across the front of it here, because some of this will be visible. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of this in dust and go across the front. All right, now that I've got a good pre-cleaning done to the VCR, let's test it out. Let's see what happens when I put a tape in, see if it functions at all, powers up at all. All right, we've got it plugged in. Let's see what happens when we, oh, it's already got a power light on, so it was all, it already had the power going to it. That's good. So there's no, there's no power button on this thing. It just automatically, once you plug it in, it has power. So let's eject it. And let's see what happens now when we put the tape in. Trying to angle it so you can see it good. I got a copy of Savannah Smiles. Don't care about this tape. Let's put it in. Standby light came on. It's making a noise. All right, it stopped making a noise. I'm gonna try to press play. won't let me all right it ejects put it down all right all right it won't let me press the play button at all or the rewind or the fast forward I can press stop but it's not doing anything, so there's nothing for it to stop. Hmm. Still says standby, so something. When I hold down eject, you can hear it spinning. Let's try it again.
So the issue is that noise it's making is it trying to to do something. There's it's a motor spinning that's trying to pull the tape in around the video head, but it's not working. So if it doesn't if that uh tape reel doesn't move around the track, you can't press any of these functions. It's not gonna do anything. So we're gonna have to open it up, take it apart, see what uh, what the issue is. Why will it not pull the tape out? All right, let's open her up. This thing is dirty. All right, I got the cover off the top and you can see it is pretty dirty. Spider webs, some dead insects, tons of dust. This thing is filthy. So I've cleaned the outside up. Looks like we're gonna need to do a deep clean on the inside. So let's blow it out, clean up the dust just a little bit here before we keep going any further. All right, now that it is blown out a little bit, hold on. And most of the major stuff is out of the way. We still have to do some more cleaning. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on whenever we put a tape in that causes it not to operate correctly. Um, most likely is a belt. Probably have to get up under on the bottom and check the belts out. But let's look at it again first before we do that. So I'm gonna plug it back in. Lights on over here. Right there. Pop it up. See the, the head starting spinning, so something's working. I'm gonna do that again. So watch here and here, the video head and our main drum here, and you'll see them spin. You can even hear them if I hold the button down. So some belt's working. That's a good sign. But now let's see what it does. And put the tape in. So it won't even let me push that in. Okay, so it's not working at all really. And so I'm gonna go get something soft, like a towel, flip it over, look at it from the underside and see what's jammed or broken or missing or whatever. Uh, hopefully I can tell something more when we look at the underside of this thing. So I'm gonna go get a towel and flip it over. All right, I've got it flipped over. Let's get this bottom plate off. This thing is heavy duty metal. All right, so I'm gonna unscrew these boards and move those out of the way so we can see the mechanism down below. Be very careful doing this. It is unplugged, but you still have some capacitors and such that store some energy, which could still shock you. Do not do this while it is plugged in. 
for several reasons. One, because it's dangerous for yourself. But two, if you do like I just did just then and slip and hit some of these contacts, if you hit the right one, they'll short the thing out and it would be big issues then. You have electrical issues, which are quite a bit more difficult to repair than mechanical issues. Move that board out of the way. See, it's super dusty. Now, just checking it out down here on the underside. These, these belts still seem pretty good. As you can see, I can spin it and everything moves down here. Which is surprising. So I've got to look around and see if I see anything else that doesn't appear to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. First thing I'm going to replace is the belt that was along those two wheels. The last one was very loose and as you can see keeps its shape which is not good. It's not elastic anymore. So let's put another one on back there. I got the belt replaced that I pointed out earlier and I reset some stuff that I noticed was jammed by spinning some of the wheels just to get it moving again. Where I replaced that belt at, there was a little gear that looked like it had probably the lubrication had hardened up over the years. So I moved it through, trying to break it back up and loosen it up. And now I've flipped it back over. I'm going to see if anything changes about how it operates when I put a tape in. So here goes. Whoa. It took the tape. Did you see that? It actually took the tape. Hit play. I don't know. It tries, but then it stops. Let's see what happens when I hit eject. Yikes, it is not giving me that tape all the way back. Ugh. And it ran it over. Let's get it back out. Try that again. Ugh. Come on. Gracious, where is it stuck at now? Oh my gosh, all up in the pent rollers. Well, isn't that wonderful? Jeez, finally. It kind of ate my tape. Savannah is not smiling anymore. We can still use it to test though. So, I am going to have to mess with it some more, but I think I'm going to call it a night and try again later. But it's an improvement. It is taking the tape. You just won't play it, and then it eats it afterwards. So, one step forward, and we still got a few things to figure out. So we've got the tape where we can put it in. The track will pull the tape in and around the video head. It will rewind really nicely. It tries to fast forward, but it's not very smooth. I'll show you that in a minute, but it won't play at all. Once you press play, it's like, I'm out, I'm done. And it doesn't do anything. The standby light comes on and it doesn't work. I pulled this front uh, circuit board off so that I can look on the inside, try to see the mechanism a little bit better, but I still can't really see it. So now I'm gonna take this cover off where the, the tape goes in 
so I can fool it into thinking there's a tape when there actually isn't and hopefully I'll be able to see a little bit more about what's going on. The fact that the fast forward is not smoothly moving kind of indicates that something is slipping. But what's causing play not to work is still a mystery. But I'm going to try to get fast forward working first and see if whatever is slipping in that case will help fix the, the play issue. So I'm going to fool the VCR into thinking there's a tape in here because when I press this down, there's these two buttons here that a tape, if it was inserted, would push those buttons down as well. And so if I press them down, it's going to fool the VCR into thinking there's a tape in there. And then we can see a little bit more because the tape won't be in the way as we are trying to investigate what's going on. So it's going to be here and here so i'm going to put my fingers over that and now when i press this down you should see the track mechanism there it goes so that's working now and now i have to do something with the phone because my hands are full so let me put the phone down and we'll try to play and see what's going on so here's where i'm at with this one so i can Convince it that there is a tape inside and get it to behave in certain ways. So let me walk you through it. So you'll see if we press this down, it spools the tape in as it's supposed to. Of course, there's no tape in it right now. If I hit rewind, Took a couple tries, that's weird. But it will work as intended. You see the spin in there. So that ought to work. If I press fast forward, it works. See it spinning? So fast forward seems to work here. Now if I press play, it will not work. If I take my finger off of this trigger here, it pretends to work. We've got the standby light on over here, which is not a good thing. That means there's something wrong. And as you can see, nothing's spinning here, so the tape would not actually be playing. This pinch roller back here is spinning, the head spinning, the AC motor spinning, but the wheel that controls forward is not spinning. And as soon as I push this trigger, which would definitely be pushed if there was a tape in here, it kicks it off. It stops it. It won't allow it to play. And so you see, I can slightly push this button down and you see it kind of start to go. But if I try to lock it in, Standby light comes on and it will not play. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get it, press it down just far enough. No. See, this thing is not going whenever it goes into play. Something's stuck. It's trying to spin, but not quite. Oh, it jumped a little bit that time. There it goes. You gotta find that sweet spot. Standby light is now off. But as soon as I push this play button all the way down now, it kicks off. Standby light comes on. So that's where I'm at. And that's what I'm trying to figure out is what's, what's kicking it off whenever I press the button all the way down. What is, what is the problem? So I'm going to keep working on that. All right, check this out. I've removed the entire cassette holder. So we can really see down here with these wheels. And so watch this. So I figured this out. Whenever I hit play, you know, we're getting this standby light coming on. Well, if I move this arm back here at the back, let me see if I can 
back up a little bit. If I move this arm, you'll see uh, the light goes off. Comes back on, goes off, comes back on. So if I push it and then I press this trigger, it'll keep working. Now you'll notice that neither of these uh, wheels are spinning here that would cause the tape to go through. This is the one I'm really looking for. So you'll notice that it is not spinning right now, but if I put a little pressure, pull this back just a little bit, then it starts spinning. So it's like this thing is pressed too tight against this one. This pinch roller's pressed too tight against that one, so it's not spinning, but we don't wanna like weaken this spring. So it's probably the belt on the underside that controls this wheel is too weak. It's slipping when it's up against this other one. It, it doesn't have enough tension to actually spin this and this one. So if you back them off just a little bit where there's not as much of a pressure between the two, then it will work. But it should work the other way. So now we're going to power it down, flip it over, and check that belt, maybe even replace it, and then see what happens. But it looks like we might be getting close. So let's try that out. All right, we have replaced that belt. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, I'm pressing play. Woo, it's already spinning. Let's make sure it will keep spinning. Look at there. Oh my gosh. Let's put it back together, put a tape in and see if it'll work with a tape in it. Woo, I'm so excited, oh my goodness. So this thing is kicking my butt. I am having such an ordeal getting this thing to work. But we're getting close. It does play. So let me show you what we can do. I've got it upside down. As you can see right now, I've got a TV hooked up to it so we can see if it gets a picture. But I'm going to press play down here right now and you'll see... It won't let it play. It will let it rewind. We can stop it, but we can't play it and we can't fast forward it. You hear it doing some clicking noises. So what I figured out, for some reason, when I press play or fast forward, it's triggering the stop solenoid which is right here so when i press play you'll hear it click and it's triggering that solenoid and down here i don't think you can see it but yeah you can see it a little bit that's the standby light that means it doesn't want to go right now but if i prevent that solenoid from happening by holding this down we can get it to play. So you see I've got a picture on the TV. It doesn't look great and that's because it's a beta 2 tape and this machine is only designed to play beta 1 so you see people are moving fast. I don't have sound hooked up. I only have a uh, video but showing that the VCR can work. We will be able to get a picture on it whenever we figure out why the stop solenoid gets triggered when play or fast forward are pressed. So it's working fine, but if we stop it and we just try to press play without messing with that solenoid, it won't let it happen. We can do the same thing with fast forward. 
If we prevent that solenoid from triggering, fast forward will also work. So now I just have to figure out why in the hell is that getting triggered? And then we'll almost be there. We're getting close. We are getting close. All right, I figured I would move the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the stop solenoid right here. And you'll see if I press play, you see it getting triggered. We don't want that. That's what's giving us the headache. So like I said, whenever I stop this part from moving, let's see if I can point something down here. Stop this thing from moving up. If I just hold it down right here, then we can get it to play here. I'll show you by holding that down. It's gonna be tricky with the camera, but there it goes, now it's working. And we got a, it's a terrible picture, but we have a picture on the TV. So there you go. So luckily this thing came with the service manual. And so I've been going through the schematic. And I found like, where the power comes in. I've been tracing it to the board that's giving me some trouble. And I found this fuse. And when I look at the fuse, on the board, it's that one right there. If you look real close, it appears to be long. So I am going to remove that fuse, replace it, see if that gets me anywhere. All right, I am On the verge of finishing up replacing this fuse as you see right in there we got a new one put in so let's see if that fixes at least part of our problem so I'm gonna gotta screw this back on now Got the, the new fuse put on, so if everything is working right now, or at least back to where we were, when I push the tape down, we should see the tape thread around the video head, because it was not doing that before I replaced the fuse. So here we go. There it goes, yes! All right, so we got the tape back threading around. Let's see, if I press play. Okay, so this still is, will not work. All right, fast forward works. That's good. Rewind works. That's good. Play will not work though. And the standby light's coming back on. All right, so we still have another problem we gotta fix, but at least we're back to the threading actually happening. There we go. Awesome. Let's keep going. All right, so. Here's where we're at. I think we have almost gotten it. So after I replaced the fuse and the thing, when I press play, it would still, the button would not lock down and the standby light would come on and it would not play. It would rewind and it would fast forward. I started looking at this board across here and following the schematics and, and checking a bunch of 
resistors or resistances and voltages like for the oscillator switch here that's the sensor that uh, for you see forward and reverse making sure that that one worked properly check some stuff of course this is the back side of the uh, circuit board the IC is on the other side but checking some of the uh, pins on it seeing if the voltages look correct and everything was looking good went through and checked a few other things on this board and again things were, were for the most part checking out it seemed like there was not a problem but the thing wasn't playing so i checked the supply sensor coil which is this thing right here and so when i rewind it all the way to the end when it gets to the end of the tape or the beginning of the tape i should say it it stops when it's supposed to so it seems like that sensor is working so yeah i just kept checking some stuff and then i realized that it was kicking off during play whenever this switch back here would would open so when this arm moved and that opened up that's when it would kick off and so i started looking at it i ejected the tape and unwound it and then the tape got caught up down here which means the tape was not actually on the threading spool correctly. And so I pulled it out, readjusted the tape, and put it back in. <laughs> and then when I hit play, it worked. So we might be on to something. It is playing right now. Last step, what I've got to do now is hook it up to the old TV, see if we're actually getting a picture. So let's do that now. All right, here we go. Now keep in mind, this VCR only plays beta one tapes. I have what I believe is a beta two tape in here, might be a beta three, but the picture's not going to look correct and the it's not going to have any volume because I've only got video hooked up on it right now but let's see how it looks all right it did something and notice it was there yep got another tape in it beta 2 i believe but you see it looks right for what we expect from this player since it only plays beta ones but we got a picture you can see it's moving fast there's no sound because I don't have the sound hooked up, but everybody would be talking fast. So, holy shit, we got it working. So, now I'm going to put it back together and put it inside the LV1901 TV. And we'll see if they work together. We'll do that next time.